So the audio in this video is not great, as this is my first time trying it in real life video. I apologize for that, and uh, if I do more videos like this, I'll try and fix the audio in the future. So just bear with it in this video. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to do a brief overview on the 2006 Lotus Exige. So this car in its stock form weighs 2,000 pounds. This one slightly modified to where it weighs 1950, which is far lighter than most average cars. It has 190 horsepower and 138 pound-feet of torque, which is not much, however, its power to weight ratio is rather good as it's not a heavy car. So between 2006 and 2011, they brought around 1,100 Lotus Exiges into North America. 328 of those were from 2006 and 51 of those from 2006 were in chrome orange. So this car is about 12 and a half feet long under four feet tall and is about five and a half feet wide. Now, this car back in 2006 had it, its zero to 60 was five seconds and it was pretty fast then. Obviously now times have changed and it's rather slow. The average sedan is about that fast now. The uh, color, as I said, is chrome orange and in the sunlight it really pops and is one of the coolest colors you can get on any car. This car is extremely good handling as it only weighs 2,000 pounds has stiff springs and really grippy tires. Plus with all the aero with added downforce, it handles and sticks to the track really well. Now this car, like most mid-engine cars, has staggered wheels. So it's 17 inches in the back and 16 in the front. Now at 100 miles an hour, this car makes 100 pounds of downforce, 48 coming from the rear and 42 in the front. It's got a wing, a functional front splitter, side scoops, it's got a rear diffuser paired with a flat underbody bottom which reduces drag and increases downforce. Let's check out the inside of this car. Getting in it is sort of difficult, but once inside it fits you quite well. The seats are really tight in this car. You can't really move around much at all, which is quite nice for when you're cornering at high speeds around the track. Now inside this car, there's not that much as far as nice high quality stuff. You have some fake leather up here, plastic. There's a lot of exposed metal inside and more plastic. Your shifter, obviously. This bit right here is actually part of the chassis inside the car, and I guess it would have been too much weight if they just put some carpet on it or something. So this passenger seat is not movable or reclinable at all. The driver's seat can move forward and backward, but cannot be reclined either. Interestingly, the driver's seat is more towards the middle of the car and the passenger seats is over to the side so the driver has more space and can view from the center of the car more. Also, these pedals are very close together and there's not much room. And this has holes drilled out of it for weight savings purposes. Now, as this car is designed for weight, they didn't spend that much time putting nice features in. So this is basically the crappiest stereo you can ever have. And the AC is terrible out in Arizona. In the summer, it barely takes the edge off of crap and we're sweating really badly in this car. So like most modern day cars, it starts with a start button, but you actually need to have a key in the ignition, which doesn't make much sense at all. Getting out of this thing is no easy task. In fact, when Jeremy Clarkson got out of it, he fell on the ground. Thankfully, I'm a lot younger than he is, so I'm a bit better at climbing out of stuff, but it still is no easy task. Now up in the front end of the car, this doesn't open or anything. It's just a bunch of mechanical bits under it. You can't access it without taking the entire front of the car apart. And uh, yeah, there's really nothing up here at all except the radiator, brake parts, and stuff like that. So this roof scoop isn't actually functional. However, on the 07 and up cars, they opened it up and it helped cool the supercharger. This car, however, is naturally aspirated, so there's no point in it. Let me show you under the hood of this awesome car. So. In here is the smaller engine. We'll get back to that in a minute. But here is the trunk. And it's pretty small. You can't really fit anything in here. It gets quite hot because there's not much keeping it from the engine. So you can't keep anything that could go bad here, like your pet cat or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's quite small. Like I said before, this is a 1.8 liter inline four engine producing 190 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque. So this car has a variable valve system similar to VTEC, and when this car hits 6200 RPM, you feel a boost in power as it swaps cam profiles. Here's the license plate on this car for all you internet criminals. If you want to come to my house, kill me in the middle of the night and steal the car, then uh, please do. There's the license plate. Come find me. 
So this car's top goes from here to here and it can be taken off. Interestingly, it's not fully waterproof and it says that in the owner's manual, which is odd since it's from England and that place is quite rainy. So whenever you're washing the car or in some rain, expect some water leakage. These mirrors are off of a Proton Economy car of some sort and they're not electronic. You have to stick your hand out the window and readjust them, which is fine on this one. However, on the other side of the car, when you're in the driver's seat, changing this one's a pain. So you're gonna be getting out of your car, walking around, changing it, and then getting back in and driving away. So for 2006, Lotus offered 19 different colors on these cars. I will now read them for you. Solar Yellow, Phantom Black, Storm Titanium, Aspen White, Arctic Silver, Ardent Red, Starlight Black, Laser Blue, Krypton Green, British Racing Green, Graphite Gray, Chili Red, Polar Blue, Nightfall Blue, Canyon Red, Magnetic Blue, Aubergine Purple, Racing Green Metallic, Chrome Orange. I did not pronounce the purple right. The top speed of this car is 147 miles an hour. Part of that is because of the very little amount of horsepower you get, and then another part of that is because of the rather high amount of downforce. However, Top speed is not what this car was made for. This car was made for handling and track performance, so it's not exactly the fastest top speed. I'm gonna throw up the original window sticker on screen. So this car cost, when brand new, 57,250 US dollars, which in today's money is about $75,798. Today, this car is valued at about $40,000 with 47,000 miles on it. So this car attracts lots of attention no matter where it goes. I've ridden in this car several times and every time we go out, someone looks at it, takes a picture, you know, something along those lines. It gets as much attention as any supercar would, which is kind of funny because it's really just a Toyota at heart. The thing's super reliable because it's just all Toyota stuff. It's great for the track because it's just, it's cheap to use basically, low maintenance costs and all of that. So a metal gas cap feels quite solid and a lot like a race car. And that sums up this car quite well. Now, it handles like a race car, handles like a go-kart. is quite an overused term nowadays, but for this car, it is actually quite accurate and true. It's much like a race car for the road, and it does actually handle like a go-kart. This car has mesh over the engine to let the heat out, as well as has mesh over the front and by the side scoops. And just to let some heat out, let air in, when this car was made, and this might still be true, it was the smallest windshield ever. And because of that, you needed one windshield wiper, which of course saves weight. This window is so small, I can reach across the entire thing. So in a future video, I will go over the modifications on this car, how much they cost, and how much weight was saved. There are a lot on this car. If this video gets 500 likes, I will put my 13 year old brother in the trunk of this car, or I will at least attempt to. Wow, you're still here? I wasn't thinking anybody would get this far. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Since you're still here, hey, might as well hit that sub button. It's free. Also, leave a like, because as I said, 500 likes and poison's going in the uh, trunk. Anyways, now that you've seen this bit, on to our racing driver and his impressions of this car. Really?